Hey everybody, it's Murphy Gray Hunter, and it is Wednesday, November, what is today, the 30th? Let's see, today, yeah, today is the 30th. Wow, I cannot believe that tomorrow is going to be December 1st. Like, whoa, don't you just feel like the holidays, I'm like, right when, um, I, maybe it's just the whole year, but as soon as, like, um, Halloween hit, it's just like, you know and um anyway so yeah i um i just can't believe it. it's gonna be december 1st already so but it's finally a little cool today i was walking i was in the house and i was telling my daughter i'm like i'm a little cold are you cold and, and she got like shorts and t-shirt on and i went and i put on a pair of pants and socks and, and she's like yeah, but I'm under a blanket. Then I looked at the temperature and it was like 60, 67 in the house. I'm like, Shh, no wonder, because it, it's cool outside. But I went outside to go feed my dogs. I noticed it was cool outside. But our we live in a brick house, and so we have wood floors and stuff, so it stays pretty cool, which is good in the summertime since we live on the freaking sun here in Texas. Oh, I feel so good, because, you know, I'm still fighting this cold slash... I think it was allergies. Maybe it started off as a cold. Um, and um, anyway, long story short, after four weeks, all I have left is just a little bit of cough. And so a little bit of stuffiness, but you know, I'm all right with that. So during this Thanksgiving holiday, my mom was over here, you know, and I really love having my mom over um, for obvious reasons, you know, visiting and all that. But she's always telling me stories about my grandmother, which that it was her mother-in-law, my grandmother who was a, a practicing witch. And um, she was telling me um, how, you know, they um, they owned um, a lot of property in Yancey, Texas. Okay, Yancey slash like Seguin. Okay, and um, um. And you know they had a a cotton a cotton. They had like a a cotton. Oh, sorry. They had like a cotton um a cotton farm. I don't know if it's a cotton farm, cotton gin, whatever you call it. But anyway, they they um grew cotton, and then they would have a bunch of workers come and harvest it, and they would sell it, and blah blah blah. Well, because of the, the success of the cotton, they, um, you know, were considered not like super wealthy, but, you know, they were pretty well off because they were, they had money and they had, you know, um, you know, a big farm and, and all of this stuff, you know, and, um, my grandfather owned a lot of trucks that he would use, like, you know, for the cotton and stuff. And, um machinery and things like that so you know when people on the outside looking in they say oh they got all these things but really you know if you own a business you really just kind of break even you know and so you know I guess I don't know but anyway so um um my my grandmother would tell my mom that for years she would always find like when she was going around um, on the farm, you know, like, you know, cleaning up and getting shrubbery and things like that. Um, she would always find that one here. She, you know, she would always find like jars. Um, she would find jars of, of just various things like jars that had, um, um, liquid in there and, and their pictures, her kids' pictures, her and her husband, uh, pictures of their, of their farm and things like that, you know? So she said she would always find things like that, that people would put spells on them, um, I guess, so they wouldn't have success. And so um, my mom thinks that she doesn't know, but she says maybe that's what started um, grandma into doing uh, malicious work. Because she says she doesn't really know, um, because she said that... Um, my grandmother did um, a lot of spells, but she was really mostly well. Um, she was mostly well sought after um, for her healing ability, 
that she would do a lot of healing spells, um, you know, to help people. And, um, but then, you know, she got into doing other stuff as well. But she, she doesn't know. That's just her talking. She's like, I don't know if that is what started her to do bad things to people. When she started finding things, when people started doing things against her, you know, or, you know, they, um, I don't really know what happened to their business. Um, I, I don't know that. And I'm trying to find out like more details on that. Um, maybe, you know, because, because when I don't know the stages, but they moved to Lockhart, Texas. And when they moved to Lockhart, I was talking to the owner of this little store there called Eddie's. And I remember, <clears throat> I remember walking to that store. That store was one street ahead of, um, like a street back, um, from my grandmother's house. But <clears throat> the street just wasn't like just one street back. You know, there was a lot of land. So it was like some, some distance behind my grandmother. But I remember when we would go visit my, my grandma, we would walk. To that store it was a pretty good little hike but we would walk to eddie's and we would get snow cones and pickles and you know all kinds of things like that and um but anyway um so uh we still go there because um right there i thought i heard like i heard rumbling outside i'm like what's that noise um um right there um uh, where um that store is where eddie's is right down the street across the railroad tracks is the haunted school that um my daughters and myself went to um and um i don't think i've told you about that haunted school but there's a haunted school there and um um uh, i guess if you're on my facebook page you've seen the pictures and all that long story short i went i went there and i did some photo shoots and stuff there and um and there's a lot of history on that so if you want me to do a story on that i i can um, and I can show you pictures of it on my iPad because I've done photos and stuff and we've gone into the school, um, <clears throat> and we've looked around, we did some ghost hunting in there and, uh, we've captured some pretty, um, awesome things in there, like even recordings. Um, but anyway, um, we went there and because I did a photo shoot of the King and Queen of the Empire Court, but back in the, um, back behind the, the haunted school, there was a um there's it's on beautiful land and um you have to kind of hike through some overgrown wood because nobody takes care of it anymore and um there's a beautiful little creek there and i was doing a piece from um diminish seven diminish seven is a um the vampire um um band um and um they've come here and they performed at um, the vampire ball he has th they have tons of music um on um the um uh, tons of music on um itunes and all that um anyway long story short with that sorry um i went um i i heard a song that that he composed the the lead singer um of the minute seven and he, it, he was just playing the piano and I remember listening to it and as I listened to it I could just see a video um, I could see all these images popping up of what of things that I would love to shoot uh, like a, like I was composing a whole photo shoot and I'm trying to find it here just so you can hear just a, a little piece of it okay because I know it's not what we're the story we're talking about but okay So that's Daily. She's the uh, vampire queen. No, and that's Logan. He's a vampire king. But I had them dress and look a certain way. The whole story behind this was that she was an innocent girl out in the woods. And here he is, creature of the night, just soaking in the sun, being lonely. Um, and just as he's out there, he comes upon this beautiful innocent girl and he's stalking her almost like a wild animal does like you know the DSC and I you can see him you can see him so in every shot I had him kind of doing that whole 
Where's Waldo thing? Okay. Behind the tree. Anyway. So, there he is down there. So the whole time he's just lurking, looking for her. And then he approaches her. And, um... I just, as I was listening to the music, I could just see it all playing into my head. And he approaches her. You know, she's scared. It just kind of did. Um, anyway, so... Um... I just love the music okay so at the very end of this video um, okay at the very end of this video um, she falls in love with him and she wants to be with him and he's going to make her his bride his mate um, he really bit her okay there's a long story behind that they bite each other all the time. Anyway, so... So he's turned her into his mate. And at the very end, she becomes his... His queen. Anyway, I know y'all may think it's cheesy, but I'm just... I don't know. I heard that. I heard the song. I fell in love with it. I, I sent him a message, asked him if I could please use it to do a photo shoot he agreed and then I showed him the, the 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 video when it was done he absolutely loved it so anyway long story short I'm sorry I got so sidetracked um um I've been there a few times to do um a photo shoot I've done um another photo shoot there after that um oh, it's just so pretty Anyway, if you go through the back of those woods all the way through, you end up in the back property of my grandmother's place. And so, anyway, we were there. Um, and also in Eddie's now, in the store Eddie's. I'm sorry I got so sidetracked, guys. You know how I am. And um, if y'all want to see any of my photography stuff, I have a channel um, under Murphy Hunter. One, just a number one, and for some reason, it wouldn't let me add anything else, so then I had to make another one, just Murphy Hunter. And so, I have videos on both uh, for my photography. So, I haven't done anything in a while as far as putting videos on there, but um, I, I put all of my stuff on my social media under my Facebook. I have a D6 pick, um, you know, like this D6 pick, D6 and PIX. That's my photography name, okay? Again, way off subject, right? All right. You're like, get back to the freaking freaking story. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, Eddie's now, I don't know if back then, but now that store is a Botanica store slash everything else store. So they sell like ice and chips and whatever and snow cones and all that. But then on this side of the store, they have all of your Botanica candles. Um, they have lot of lots of saint candles botanica candles oils herbs statues um um uh all kinds of witchcraft botanica things right and um incense and um just all kinds of stuff you know um i believe I, that's where i got my rose of jericho i got a couple of those there and the People who run the store now are Eddie's, the original Eddie's, um, Eddie Senior's children and grandchildren. And so one time when we were there, um, he was there because we go there to go buy, um, we go there to go look at the property and we also go there to the Botanica. Now, one time after we left that, that, um, and that I also go through there to see my aunt just to pay my respects to say, say hi to my aunt. And she'll, you know, that's when I was really asking about the book. And she would just tell me more things because I want to know more stories about my grandmother. And um, I have other aunts because my grandmother had 15 children. So my mother and I just talked about going to see my other aunts and seeing if they could help me to um, either give me some information about the book and also give me more information about 
my grandparents. I want something that belongs to my grandfather. I have something from, from my grandmother. I have, you know, things from my grandmother. I have things from my maternal grandparents, but on my paternal side, I don't have anything from my grandfather. And so I would like to have something. And anyway, so, um, um, so yeah, anyway, we were there and, um, uh, we were there, um, at the school because, um, after we had been there for, you know, when we went in to do the, the, um, the whole reason we had went inside the haunted school was to, um, we had been there a few times and, um, my, my oldest daughter, she helps, um, lost souls pass on. Okay. I don't know how the term you want to call it, but that's what she does. And, um, so we went there because when we were there, we could physically see a dark, you can see a dark, um, shadows, like shadows, but you can physically see like the black cloud and then you see a white one and wherever the white one went, the black one went on and the white one would be over here and the black one would come on top of it and the white one would go over here and they would go on top of it. And, and, and I don't know, but it, there, there were so many black ones and just a couple of little white ones and so my daughter felt like maybe she needed to go and help the either one of them you know good or bad pass on and so after we had did that and um, some months have passed and we went back um, because we wanted to go buy from Eddie's store because we have botanicas here in Austin but we like to go there um, because my grandmother's my grandparents graves are there and there's a lot of other reasons why we go there. So why not stop and buy from, um, from his store, right? Um, and so, um, you know, we stopped at the, um, school first and my daughter, uh, my, my, um, fourth daughter was looking around and she was like, mom, come here, come look. And we ran over there because I told you it's a big property. There was just fields of lavender. We have never seen lavender grow there before. Um, just, just fields and fields of lavender. Now, one year we had went and um, I found a branch that I liked, and there was something else there that grew that I really liked. It was flowers or something, and I always carry cornmeal in my trunk, and I sp I sprinkle cornmeal as an offering for taking something, and. Um, Anyway, so that's the first time we had seen lavender. So we harvested a lot of lavender and left all of the, left all of the cornmeal. And um, um, so anyway, um, when uh, we went to the store to ask, um, you know, to buy stuff, Eddie, the the owner, the you know Eddie Senior, um, he was there. And I didn't recognize him at first. We were just talking, and then he's like, "Hey, how y'all doing? I haven't seen y'all around here." And blah blah blah, you know. And you know, because you know, it's a small town, so everybody kind of knows each other. Um, and we were telling him, um, you know, that our my grandparents used to live here. Blah blah blah, on and on. And then we told him we come to the school and stuff. And so he told us a little bit of history about the school. He told us some history history about the town um and so much so much interesting history and i can make a separate video because otherwise it'll go to another place right um and um and i'm sorry guys i have a tendency of doing that i will just talk about blah 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 blah, blah, blah all kinds of stuff i don't stay on track y'all know i'm sorry if that irritates y'all but that's just how it is <laughs> um anyway so um he asked me who our parents were grandparents were and I told him and he was like oh I remember them he goes I remember I remember your dad too he says uh, we used to go fishing all the time and I wasn't really close with my father I, I wasn't close at all with my father and um, he had left when I was very very young and um, anyway so I mean I saw him but I was never very close to him and um, so he was telling me, yeah, but he goes, I knew that he had three sons, but I didn't know he had a daughter. And I'm like, well, 
he has eight children and he's like like what i was just like really like taken back that you know he hadn't talked about any of us and my father had passed away and he said yeah i went fishing with him like the week before he passed away he goes i knew everything about him i never knew that he had more than three kids i was like well whatever what can you do right anyway so he was like um i know your grandparents because i remember um when your grandparents first came into town he says your grandmother came walking up you know down the street i saw her walking down the street with a little basket in her hand and stuff walking she came to the store and she told me i don't have any money but i will give you my word that i will pay you if you give me credit and he said at the time he says he didn't do credit because you know, he just didn't want to get involved with all that because he just didn't know if he could trust people to pay him. And so he's like, well, I don't, I don't do credit. And she's like, no, I'll give you my word. I will pay you. And so he says, I don't know what it was, but it was just something, something about her. And I said, okay. So she took what she needed. He said she only took what she needed. And then that next week she came and she paid me. And I've always given her credit for years. He goes, all for years and years but he said yeah he said yeah she was uh she was the uh, um the town witch i knew that she did a lot of things you know for people and she'd come here and, and get stuff and she grew her own stuff and you know so he told me a bunch of interesting stuff about you know my grand my grandparents and stuff um and then you know he was telling about you know how um, after my grandfather had that accident where he shot himself in the head, that he was just never the same anymore. Well, yeah, he he, he wasn't. I, I still don't. Every time I watch, like, a zombie movie, I feel like that's how my grandfather was. He was like a zombie. It terrified me. Like, I didn't, I would run away from him because I was so scared. Um, you know, but, and it's, it's crazy because that's, the only memories that I have of him is when he was like that. Because I can't remember any other times that he wasn't like that. So he had been like that for some time. So probably the whole time, you know, that I was, you know, that I knew him, he was like in that zombie state, you know. But my grandmother, you know, they live in that house and my aunt now the one that i tell you who has the book well she used to um you know she always lived there she um she was married and then she had a boyfriend and my grandmother fixed it to where she could live with her husband and her boyfriend in the same house in the same room okay so she put a spell on the husband so that way the husband will go up and go to work and go make the money while my aunt and her boyfriend got to stay at home and do whatever they want didn't have to work and he would come home and he would hand over his paycheck and they would spend his money and he would go like a robot okay and she would sleep with all of them you know um Sorry. She would sleep with all of them and that lasted for a very long time and people would always tell him my mom would tell me that people would tell him all the to tell the husband what's wrong with you you know why are you letting her do that you just let your wife have a, a live-in boyfriend and then you go to work and you just you know um give him your paycheck what's wrong with you and he was like I don't know I don't know I know it's wrong but I can't do anything about it mm. So, bless you. Bless you. My baby. She's got sick with allergies, too. Anyway, so she did... I don't know how long that happened, what broke the spell, or anything. Obviously, she's not with him anymore. Um, then, also, she told me one time that... She told me that um, my grandmother had some people over. Now, since my grandmother did like a, she had a lot of clients and she did a lot of spells for people my grandfather didn't like it you know there was a lot of people that he didn't care for and um this was before he you know was all zombie down shit right so she said that 
she remembers, um, because my grandmother used to do this even when she was in Yancey and Seguin. Okay. And so, uh, she says that people came over and that my grandma would be like, okay, okay, you know, see you next time. It was good seeing you, blah, 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 as they were leaving the house. And then my, as soon as they leave the house, my grandpa would go and he would get the salt, just regular table salt. And he would do the cross in the front door. He would, first he would sweep out, you know, sweep behind them. Cause you know, that's the thing. And when somebody comes to your house and you don't want them to return, you grab the broom and you sweep the path that they walked out. You sweep out. Okay. And, um, and I still do. That's why I sweep my house all the time. Not to keep people coming back, but it's just something that I was raised doing, especially if there's something that I don't want to return to my house. Um, but you sweep out all the negativity, right? Anyway, so he would sweep and then he was like, I don't want these people coming back here. And he would sweep all everything out. And then he'd do the cross in the front door with salt. And my grandmother would get all upset with him. Like, stop doing that. You know, but it was funny because as, um, as much as he didn't like her doing that for some people, he was picking up. He didn't do good crap, but he would just pick up. You know, here and there. It's kind of reminds me like of my husband when um when um he when there's something he'll be like, Well, can't you go get some of that stuff and just do this and that to it? Can't you just do this? <laughs> I'm like, Okay, I'll go get I'll go get the stuff. You know, um or when he came home one time he saw I had the red brick dust in front of the of the um door and he well he thought it was red brick dust and he goes, Baby you can't have that red brick dust right there, he said, because, you know, people are going to come over here and they're going to wonder what the hell that is and blah, blah. I said, boy, that is not red brick dust. He's so cute. I said, that is not red brick dust. I said, that is cayenne pepper to keep the, the scorpions and the spiders from crossing over. He goes, oh, well, it looked like so. So I said, no, the red brick dust and all the other stuff is all on the perimeter of our property. <laughs> he just goes, Ugh. so, uh, but, you know. He loved that I do all that stuff. When I hit the deers with the truck, he goes, didn't you do the protection on the truck? Didn't you do the protection water and put the stone in there? I said, no, I didn't do it. He goes, well, go do it. That way you don't hit another thing. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, it kind of reminded me of my husband when, when my mom said that. But anyway, so um, another little thing that my grandmother did um, when... <clears throat> When my, um, when my mom, um, divorced my dad, um, you know, he moved back to, um, with his mother and, she, you know, she wanted my mom, um, to get back together with my dad and all this, you know, back and forth. So anyway, when, when they got the divorce and it was final, she put a spell on my mother and all of a sudden, my mother woke up. My mom has really nice skin, and my 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 grandmother has really nice skin. Because my grandmother has, she's the one who is Japanese and Spaniard, and um, she has very beautiful skin. Um, my uh, grandfather is the one that has the um, um, Mayan Indian in his blood, along with um, uh, Cuban. And um, anyway, so that's on my mother's side. And, oh, and some Cherokee, which I found out. And I'm like, oh, so we're Apache and Cherokee, along with everything else. So anyway, she got, she inherited really good skin, which she passed it down to us. Because pff, I don't, a lot of people talk about that I have really nice skin. Well, I don't do anything to my skin. Um, like, I don't do anything special. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. I've never had pimples or anything like that. Um, but my mother never had them either. And one day... She woke up with these, um, with this, like, one sore on her face. Then it turned into another sore. And then it turned to another. My mom had sores just, like, right here on her cheeks. And she said they were so painful. And they would just, when she would wash them, they would just bleed. They hurt so, so bad. And she went to several doctors. She went to dermatologists. She went to different specialists. This happened, this went on for almost, gosh, she said almost six months six eight months passed almost close to a year and no one could could cure them she had so many treatment done and 
none of the doctors could figure out what it was and you know maybe it's this maybe it's that so she had a series of different things and nothing nothing budged nothing you know nothing took care of those sores and so I don't know I was in Chicago at the time and um, I remember when I came to see my mom and she, and I saw they were so bad I mean they were not just little pimples they were huge sores and they would I would see when she would wash her face they would just bleed and they you could just see how inflamed they were like they were big sores like like they look like like the the little mini um peas that you buy at the grocery store little mini peas they were like that they were just so bad and um <clears throat> anyway so she went someone told her i had went back to chicago and someone had told her to go and see um a curandera a, a healer in san antonio and my mom lived in austin san antonio was only like an hour and a half away so she went and she saw this lady named nancy and she was a, um, a curandera and a healer. She also did um, brujaldia. She did witchcraft and a little bit of this. And she did card readings and things like that. And um, she told my mom, she did a reading on my mom. And she told my mom that someone had put a spell on her. That her mother-in-law had put a, a hex on her. And she put a hex on Sorry if it keeps going white because the light coming in, the sun. Um... She said that um, her mother-in-law had put a hex on her, so that way, no, since she wouldn't take the sun back, she she disfigured her face like that, so no other man would want her. And which didn't work because obviously my mom she got remarried even with those sores. I said, "Get on, mama, with your hot self." But anyway, so um, she she gave my mom something to to break. She did. She broke the spell, and then she gave my mom an amulet to wear to protect herself. And as soon as she did that, boom, her face cleared up. And um, then um, my um, sister, all, all this time, you know, that went away and everything. Then my sister, she lived in um, either Chicago or Dallas at the time, one of those. She, um, she came to, um, this was before, um, this was before, the bumps okay so th this is before the spell she did on the on the bumps um my um my um <clears throat> sister had came to visit and i remember i was still like in high school and my brother had was on r and r he was in the marines and he was um uh he worked on a ship he was with the cat one of the captain's guards or whatever i don't know what, exactly what his title was but anyway, um, they, they came to visit, and it was during the holidays, and she, my mom had bought a brand new car. And um, she had, um, she let my sister borrow it when she was here. And my sister and my brother, they went to a law car to go visit their father. And when they went to go visit um, the father and you know, the grand, my grandmother, um, uh, they took the car, and that weekend we went to the carnival me my sister and my brother okay went to the carnival and then i told them I'm, i was gonna stay you know i was gonna stay with my friends they went home and my sister said she was driving and she just she doesn't remember what happened but she was driving and when she woke up she had her the car was wrapped around a telephone pole and they had to literally cut my brother out of the car the passenger side was just all crunched in and they had to physically cut my brother out and he messed up his legs so bad and um, it was horrible because they had to sneak him back on the on the ship because he couldn't go back hurt but if he was already on the ship what could they do right anyway so um, afterwards my mom uh, everybody left and my mom went to the to the um, um, junkyard where they took the car and she went to go clean the car out to get all her stuff. But, you know, the car was brand new, so she really didn't have too much stuff in there. But she was like, let me just go make sure I don't have anything. You know, and she was. they told her, just make sure you look for everything. And she went and she was looking on the floorboard. Because, the you know, when you have change, the change had spilled out. She's picking up the change. And she put her hand under the seat to, to, see, to get the rest of the change. She put her hand under the seat. She found a little pouch. And the little pouch had um, stuff in it. Powders and 
had um, powders and it had um, um, some other stuff in there, some powders and some bones. It had some hair, which she obviously she knew was her hair, um, and some other things um, in there. And it was under the seat. And she took it to Nancy and she told her that, oh, she, no, she took it to, she didn't take it to Nancy. She she found it, she burned it. That's what it was, she burned it. And then, um, then after that happened is when, um, like a few months after is when all the stores, um, not a few months, about, yeah, a few months after because less than a year because I had moved, I went to Chicago. And right before, right when I came back to visit, um, she had those sores. And so, um, yeah, it was just horrible. My grandmother has done some pretty shitty things. Um, and um, so, you know, um, trying to, my grandmother's done so many things. I just, um, I'm just trying to tell you the little pieces of stories that really aren't enough to make like a whole video on. Um, so I just kind of put these little ones that I know here and there that she's done. <clears throat> um, my mom said that when they lived in Lockhart, um, they lived in these projects and they were brand new projects and she said they were so nice and she said they had a really big one because, you know, they had a lot of kids and, um, she said they were brand new and so she said they were going to be moving. She remembers when they were in that house that her and my dad were, they always fought all, they never used to fight before and when they were in there, they used to fight all the time. They couldn't figure out why they were always fighting. And, um, you know, like just all of a sudden, you know. And um, <clears throat> so they were going to move out of there. And she was cleaning and she was cleaning everything out, wiping things down. Um, and um, so she said she was up on the top closet and she was wiping it down. And um, she said that in the very back of the closet, she found a jar and it had um. I had um, all of our pictures, like our family picture, in there, and it had um, some liquid, and it had other stuff in there. And she took it to my grandmother, and my grandmother told her that someone had put a hex on the family. And um, so she broke the spell, and she said she knew who it was. She said it had to have been Felicita, who was the babysitter, because I was the only one who came to the house. And she went after her. I don't know what happened to her. But um, she just told my mom that she told her that she was going to get her good in some words like that. And so, yeah, it's it's crazy whenever I mention who my grandmother is to some of the older people that still live in that town. They're like, oh, that was your grandmother? You know, like, you know, and it's like um, she did a lot of good things, but then she also did a lot of bad things. Um, but anyway. Um, one thing I was telling my mother before I finish this video, because it's already going on almost 40 minutes. One thing that I wanted to tell y'all is that I was telling my mom that, um, this has been three, six, five years now, five, almost six years now. I have been, um, smelling, um, so every once in a while I'll smell smoke, like tobacco. And... I'm just like, I know that it's a presence. I know that it's someone. Because when I, when my grandmother comes around on my mom's side, I smell her scent. Like, I think it's a perfume, but I don't know what the name of it is or even what type of perfume my grandmother wore. But I know it's her. My grandmother's come to me five times. And I'm going to make a video because my daughter's asked me to make a video talking about, about my grandmother's visits. Anyway, so... Um, I always know when my grandmother comes, but with this tobacco smell, I didn't know what, you know, I kept, I kept thinking that it was my father and I would, I would say, cause my father, when my father passed away, it got really strong. And so I would say, I don't know if it's you dad, but if it's you, I didn't want you around me when you were alive. I don't want you around me now that you're dead. So you're not welcome here. And so it would still kind of linger and I would start my sage and I would just say, if you're dad, you need to leave. You know, if you're dad, you have to leave, right? And so I told my mom, I said, all these years, I said, just a few weeks ago, I smelled it again. I was laying in bed. I mean, this happens a lot. I'm laying in bed. I could be up here. Mostly it's in the middle of the night when I'm by myself. Uh, well, shit, I'm always by myself, just about. But mostly 
at night when I'm by myself, um, I'm downstairs and I'll smell it again. And then I'm just like, I don't know who you are coming around me, but if it's you, Dad, I've asked you to stop visiting me. Okay, so then I told my mom this this weekend. I said, you know, this keeps happening, and I don't know if it's Dad because, you know, I don't want him here, and he just doesn't understand. Then he, she says, maybe it's your grandmother. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah. Don't you remember? She smoked pure tobacco. And I was like, that's right. And, and she goes, remember, I remember my grandmother had, um, she carried, um, she had this can of pure tobacco. It wasn't like, like, it was tobacco that she would grow in her own stuff, her own personal stash, right? And she would get the paper and she'd put it in, she'd roll it up like you'd roll up a joint. She'd roll it up, smoke her own cigar, or her own c cigarettes. She'd roll them up, like, quick, too, right? And I remember, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember. Grandma used to smoke tobacco. And um, it was always in a in a in a little roll of paper. My grandpa used to smoke in a pipe. And um, with my grandmother being native, I'm surpri surprised she didn't have a pipe, but she did it in a little in a cigar or c cigarette or you know what I mean, a rolled up cigarette. And um, so she says that smells really strong of tobacco. And I said, yeah. I said maybe it's her. She says maybe it's her because you. Um, have I have an altar of you know for my ancestors and um you know I'm always talking to my ancestors and especially since I have been um really curious about her book and really thinking about her lately just it maybe it's your grandmother coming around to to talk to you to help you or whatever and I'm like you know what that's so true and a few readings that I've had and um they always tell me that I have so many Native American protectors behind me and the main one is a chief and his name is uh, he just tells everybody to call him Carl and I've had three readers tell me the same thing that I have a main protector and his name is um well he he tells them just call me Carl but I don't know what his real name is and behind Carl is she they uh, the three of them have said this that I have a um a bunch of Native American warriors behind me, like my protectors. And um, so and she, they told me names of all my other ones, which I'm um, like ones that help with your children, ones that help with your creativity, blah, 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 you know, and all that. And so um, I even have one named Petunia, like Petunia? I've never even heard that name, Petunia. Um, and anyway, so long story short, um, yeah, I just, you know, um, I was just really, um, I'm very, very in tuned and very close to my Native American culture. That's very, very dear and dear to me, as well as my Japanese side. I also um, recognize that as well. Those are the two out of the very many cultures that I have in me that mean so much to me. Um, that just mostly the Native American is what really speaks to me. But the, the peace and the calmness, um, um, I think it's just a combination of everything, you know. But anyway, so I hope y'all like the bunch of ramble of everything and some grandmother stuff in there. Um, I will get more from, I will get more things. Um, and I'm sorry, like I said, I'm kind of just everywhere when I talk because I, that's just how I am. Um, that's just how I talk. If y'all are my friends, y'all know. Ask my sister. I'll be talking to my sister about something. And I'll be like, oh yeah, what about so-and-so? Because my daughters call me Dory because I forget everything. So if I don't tell you right now, it's going to be gone. And so, anyway, that's just my personality, I guess. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, I'm going to make a video talking about, um, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, how she comes to visit me um, several times and the things that we have talked about and she wasn't a witch but um, she comes to see me a lot <laughs> and I'm very very fortunate um, but anyway as always guys I love y'all all and thank you for watching and blessed be